Hello everyone and welcome back to my playthrough of Alone in the Dark. Last time, as we were traversing more through uh, Jeremy's psyche, we ended up going through our own personal history, uh, one which Carnby had completely forgotten about. It seems he was, at one point or another, or currently still is, a resident of the uh, Derseto Manor. And uh, all everyone he's been interacting with may or name, may not be just a figment of his imagination. Uh, we are somewhat being stalked by the Dark Man as well. He kind of pointed us to our uh, true nature. We had a bit of a, a backstory regarding the little girl, Grace, that Carmi seemed to have kept recognizing but couldn't place her. Um, she, she was from a, pre a previous case where... Um, her father kidnapped her from her mother. The mother hired a, a Carnby to find her. And uh, basically they both fell in the water. The car fell in the water. The guy drowned. But Carnby says he managed to save her and return her to her mother. Where I believe uh, they said that she was worse off than with her father. Although the her file did say that she um her dad was pretty abusive to her um and not in like you know sexually abusive to her that's what the file says anyway um and yeah now we are currently in a steamboat where jeremy seems to transport his steamboat i don't know he's stuck in the mud apparently and so is the steamboat so I don't know what's going on. Let's figure it out. Hmm. Should I go out first? You know, one thing I will say, for a game titled Alone in the Dark, there sure is a lot of light. I don't know if this really qualifies as mud. But, eh, what do I know? It's the marshes. I'm sure, there's a lot of mud to be found in the marshes. Hey, some haphazardly placed bullets. Don't mind if I do. Hope everyone's doing great today. I don't know what it was after playing last time. Oh, gee, oh God. What the fuck? I can't even tell what the fuck's going on. Can I? What? What the fuck? Is it? Why is it every time I try to get a say something, this shit happens? Why did this? What the fuck is going on, dude? Yo, those reminds me of like the spiders from the fucking mist, man. What the fuck. Anyway, like I was saying, um, what was I saying? <laughs> yeah, after playing last time, I just felt so drained. I don't know what it was about this game. It just... The boat wedged uh, itself right into the bayou. If I get the motor started, I could try reversing back into the river. I don't know. This seems pretty, uh definitively stuck 
But yeah, I felt so entirely drained last time. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Oh, fantastic. Something over there and I can't get it. Okay, down or up? Let's try up first. What an ominous looking light. Because I have to jump down. That's how I can get into that room, I guess. bullets. I'm all out of... I was like, I'm all out of bullets. I'm all out of bullets. Uh, looks like this was not that area that I was thinking of. This was the area. By the way, I did look up what lanyette means. It's obviously French. Uh, it basically means a little extra or like something extra. Um, let's uh, finish looking at stuff upstairs. What it is about these locations, but they're so they feel so unremarkable. Machine gun. Yeah, you know what? I guess I could use my machine gun. It's been a while since I used them, and I've I got a lot of bullets for those. I just need something to break it. Okay, we will come back to that. It's barred. Oh, jeez. Just pick up. These are all weapons. Okay. More bullets. Can you give me more than one fucking bullet, please? It's like a sledgehammer. Thank you.
check in here. Yeah, this is where we came from. Oh, lordy. Yeah, these areas are just so unremarkable. Like, why would you... These areas don't seem that fun to me. I don't know why. So I've been rewatching uh, some of my old footage. And I've kind of been noticing some uh, interesting dialogue choices by some of the other residents. Um, specifically, Grace and Ruth. Um, and I'm wondering, I'm wondering, like, why they chose those kind of dialogue options. So, okay. First off, something I, I completely missed, uh, I must have been thinking about something else at the time, um, was when we were reading Jeremy's book, like, in the, in the beginning, um, This book, the commonplace book. It says here the people they're said are becoming dangerous. They do not understand what they're doing. I must do something to stop them. Um the orderlies, the housekeeper, and the patients are all deranged. They will call upon evil to enter this world. All will be lost, everything. So it seems like whatever is going on here, what kind of like ritual is um Jeremy was trying to prevent everyone was in on it um which means presumably all the rest of the people are the bad guys that includes Ruth Grace uh Mr. McCarthy everyone there was when we first met up with Ruth uh, in the mezzanine uh we Carmi made a remark of um you know, it looks like the ceiling fell down, like into the dining room below. And he's like, I, what, the hell, what the hell happened? She's like, uh, Ruth said, I don't know, something in the attic, something that didn't happen or something that wasn't supposed to happen happened or something didn't happen the way it was supposed to. That something didn't happen the way it was supposed to or something like that. Um, And Grace, when we were looking for the missing picture, um... Actually, let me see if I can find it. Here. This is where McCarthy has hidden my favorite young. It's very important. This is where McCarthy's hidden my favorite young. That's what it sounds like to me. And what was the picture that we found? It was like some kind of like monster. So, I'm not saying that it's like her young. If you remember last episode when we were hearing the recording of um, the orderlies and Dr. Gray um, trying to do something to Jeremy, presumably lobotomizing him, he was saying like thousands of young everywhere kind of thing, right? I think they're just called the young. So there's subtle hints appearing everywhere that I haven't been picking up on. But after rewatching some of my content, I'm I'm starting to pick up on this stuff. Uh, 
Um, I still have no idea what the fuck is going on. I don't know if everyone's a f still a figment of Carnby's imagination. Spiders show up. Why is there music now? Oh my god. What the fuck kind of music is this? Eat shit, bitch. Oh, there's another one. Where the fuck did I get an aura from?
god, I hate these fucking things. Come on, man. And he's forgotten about me. It's my last drink. I can fucking hear him pattering around. It's for bullets, right? Yeah. them over there. How many are there? Fuck. I wanted to just grab a different weapon because I'm sure this ore is going to break soon. That was a pistol. That was not a pistol bullet before. Uh, where are the other weapons? Were they down there? I think the game's at least kind of being lenient. Just giving us, uh... Ammo. What is this music? This is terrible fucking music. Oh, baby. That was bullshit. Come on. I get the music supposed to like make you feel uh, like scared and like terrified and all that shit, but it's it all it's doing is pissing me off. gonna check for bullets again real quick. God damn, I need bullets. Okay, thankfully, it's not like... Oh, God. Oh, jeez.
fuck. He just fucking die, please. I was gonna say, thankfully, it's not like infinite respawns, but I don't know, man. That thing scared me for a second. Okay, this is all new territory. We gotta be careful here. And I have no drinks either. I have no health. So I gotta be really careful. to cross a threshold. The easiest one is being invited. A door swung open, leading you inside. Another is sleep, hypnosis, or even sudden fright. There are those who fold spaces that challenge Mobius, or jump through angles that defy Euclid. If you learn to properly use your talisman, you could go anywhere. You wouldn't even need to rely on the fluttering wings of the shrieking Biakis. Oh, those Biakis. So we've got a few of them, actually. I don't think we've heard this one. No, no, we have the whole goat with arms we have. Lost children, unlocks cabinet, yeah. Yarlins. Finally. Um, I'll hold off on healing for now. Okay, can I not jump over? Could I have gone? Can I exit through there? What's my objective? Release the move from the body, return it to the river. Do I have to go back upstairs? Because the controls were upstairs. Okay, everything up here should be dead. Should be the operative word. Oh my god, this fucking music. Why can I not break these down? Like, this is so stupid. There's something back here I missed. Am 
know. Is there something I missed down there? So I have no idea where to go. What are we doing? We're trying to get the boat out of the, the marsh? Like out of the mud? How are we supposed to do that? Reversing? Is that what he said? Can you even reverse a steamboat? I honestly have no idea. There's nothing down here. Oh, man. <laughs> you know what? I'm glad I ended it last time when I did because I would not have been happy. false hope oh it's right here oh my fucking god You know what? That's fine. You guys stay up there. I think, I think I'm done up there anyway. Is that an egg sac? I'll take these monsters over those other fucking spiders. Where? There? You got some, uh, some sit on you, bro. now with all these bullets. <laughs> Stairs, aren't we? Fuck. 
the spiders. Wait, there's something there. Okay. Let's press the button. Oh, whoa! Thirty years ago, Frederick needed me to die. You're not making any sense, Jeremy. <laughs> Find hey. your focus. Hey! I cheated everyone. I didn't play my part. Hey! Yeah, that was I good. I like that. Hey! Doom! My destiny! Again. Find hey. your focus. Hey, I'm right here. What the hell is going on? Oh, everything is wrong. Nothing is in hey. I'm right here! Calm down, Mr. Conby. What do you want? Did... Were you... Were you not talking to Jeremy right now? I haven't seen Jeremy all day. Are you all right, Detective? No. Actually, actually I don't... I don't think so. Well, maybe. I'm gonna go... Look for Jeremy. Good. Let me know if you find him. I mean, can you not see the state of him? He's like covered that in blood and shit. That was Jeremy's self-deceit? A steamboat stuck in the mud? I'm not gonna pretend I understand any of that. What a bunch of psychoanalytic nonsense. Hey, you know the word. Good for you. Hey, visit Doc hey Dr. Gray visited his apartment. We just came out of the session with Dr. Gray. What the fuck? It wasn't clear to Detective Conby that he had actually accomplished anything, but he had the distinct feeling that he was making progress. The steamboat must have been what the self-deceit was referring to, and clearly the business with Grace was psychological trauma. Out of the three steps on the dark man's contract, only one thing seemed to remain, temper manic behavior. Combi was getting sick of guessing. It was time to pay Dr. Gray a visit in his apartment. The steamboat was a hideaway that Jeremy had built over the last few days. Having seen his memories extracted and expanded into physical realms by the dark man, his unconscious mind had decided to take the chance that Jeremy could manifest a world in secret. A world that wasn't sanctioned by the dark man. Deploying his own self-deceit as a gambit against his dark master. Gray's right there. Why do I need to go upstairs to see him? Okay. And just got another note. It wasn't clear to Detective Conby that he had actually accomplished... We literally just read that. It's two of the same things. It's literally... This fucking game... Okay, look, I, I understand game development is hard. I, I'm not a game developer. I don't know anything about this shit. I, I, I get it. There are people that sweat and toil and work for months and months and years on it, pouring countless hours, like 80 hours a week of their lives, constantly for years. 
And I super appreciate that. Like, look, I love playing these games. This was originally supposed to come out, what, October, November? And it was delayed four or five months. Like, what? It, 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 and to be clear, at the time, uh, there was something big coming. I forgot what it was. Something big coming out that it didn't want to compete with. So they delayed it. And they said it'll give us a chance to, like, fix bugs and stuff. What? It must have been unplayable at that stage. Like, I'm sorry, guys, but this is... There's so much going on. Like, so many bugs in this fucking game. And again, I appreciate everything that you guys do. I truly do. But, like, come on. This clearly need another month or two. Uh, where am I going? There's still something in the clerk's office. And it's still saying that there's a puzzle there. Oh, for fuck's sake. Okay. Um... So I need to go through the piazza here. Of course it's locked. Okay, something's gonna happen upstairs. Five, six, seven, eight. I wonder if these are all meant to be like different manifestations of the different people here. Uh, I don't really know how many people there are. Because I mean, <laughs> like, what is this? This way. I cannot. Alright, so we have another story beat here. Oh, this is the way to Dr. Gray's apartment. Why are we getting health here? Why is that door open? I'm not gonna like this, am I? Detective, am I glad to see you? Lock the door, will you? I don't think Dr. Gray would appreciate us sneaking around. What's going on here? This feels so strange. Yeah. Because look outside, it's bright, but it's supposed to be s storming. Detective Conby felt removed from himself, like driving drunk. He carefully tried to navigate his environment. What the hell was going on? Was he finally losing his mind? At least Emily was here to call the police if he went off the deep end. No, she's not. Um. Sorry, one second. I just want to check something. It wasn't clear to Detective Conby that he had actually accomplished anything. Get what you want. I just got an achievement that said, get what you want. That was the description. There's a book missing. Gee, I wonder where this goes. It's 
a hollow book. Okay, can I open it? I cannot. Before I put it there, let's look around. Uh, no, I wanted that. that. Toy talisman. Two out of three. Okay. Okay, indeed. Let's let's talk. Have you found anything? What? Y yeah. Uh, yeah. I've seen some things. Okay. Let me know if there is anything you want to talk about. You could say I've seen stranger things. All right. That's it. You don't find this place oh. strange. Dorsetto is certainly one of the stranger places I've been to. With Stranger Things? Alright. This room feels too real. Hyper real. More than anything I've ever experienced. Um, okay. I don't see what you mean. Forget it. I gotta get back to breaking the contract. Yeah, that's what I was talking Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, oh, whatever you say. I'm glad we had this chat, this chance to dialogue, Emily. I'm really glad. What did you do? I was just rearranging the books. Well, come on, let's check it out. Yeah, there was nothing in that empty cabinet anyway. What are you looking at in there? Nothing. There's nothing in there. Literally nothing. You're weird, Emily. I think I'm beginning to understand. Dr. Gray is dealing with some kind of mass delusion. That camera control's weird. Furniture key. Okay. Huh. Weird. Has that been there this whole time? I mean, you just walked in there. I don't know. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I just fucking reloaded. I don't know if it's meant to be this way. I mean, the music kind of helps make me think that it is. But the dialogue is very surreal. Very Twin Peaks. Um, and Twin Peaks, again, has like music like this as well. And it's surreal dialogue on purpose. I wonder if it's trying to emulate that, or it's just, I don't know, really weird writing. It's its always kind of hard to tell. Because if that's what this game's trying to do, I, I'm sorry, I'm not buying it. it. It's not doing it good enough. What were you saying about Mass Delusion? Dorsetto seems to have a deranging effect on people living close by. It has a history of creating cults devoted to some nature goddess. Even the name Dorsetto refers to the cult existing here before the Civil War. Dorsetto was the name of an ancient fertility goddess worshipped in Syria. Dr. Gray and his friends, however, seem to prefer... Shubnigroth? The black goat of the woods with a thousand young, or yeah. Shubnigroth. And that name can only have come from my uncle's twisted mind. I think all of them are in this cult business, even Jeremy. I'm not sure any of them have a choice at this point. We just need to find a way to stop all of this. Anything else? Yep. I've been so busy trying to free your uncle from the promise he made to the Dark Man. I guess I kind of just let everything else go. Don't worry, Detective. I feel like we're close. I'm sure Jeremy will turn up. If he is part of the cult, he wouldn't want to miss the Feast of St. John. I just need enough information to make him see the truth. I hope you're right. 
but I doubt he'll show up. Not as long as the Dark Man's got him hiding. So something just crossed my mind. Um, you, you remember at the very beginning I was saying like, uh, you know, the fact that you could choose between two characters, Edward is more of action, uh, part of the portion of the campaign while Emily, uh, Emily is more of the, uh, puzzle based, right? If she's not seeing any of this, what are we going to be playing as with her? Like, what's the story with her? Is it literally just everything in the man in the manner? Like, I, it can't be that long. Because this, like his uh, campaign, Carmi's campaign is, I mean, how, how long have we really played so far? It doesn't really, oh, about eight hours so far. Maybe, yeah, eight hours. She's got to be like half that. Because there's only so much you can find in the manor, right? <clears throat> Good to finally meet you, Mr. Hartwood. I'm here on the behalf of your brother, Philip. You were expecting me. Weren't you? Yes. You're from the Cerro, no? That's right. I just wanted to ask you a few questions to see if there is anything I can do to help you and your family. Okay. I understand you're full of imagination. You make up a lot of things. I suppose. And you obsess over them, blurring reality and fiction. Oh, sometimes. Do you want to tell me about the Dark Man? No. No, I, I don't. That's all right. Perhaps there is something else you can tell me. Something you know to be made up, but you hold dear. Juan? John? Who's John? No. Juan Luis Jorge. Oh, wait there, moment. Here, take a look. Is he... Oh, he is the author. It's a magnificent book. Life-changing, even. The real one is long dead, but I like to think of him as my, my friend. My most beloved friend. I see. Do you often do this? Fantasize about people you read about? No. No. Well, there is Jacob. Who is Jacob? Turn to the last page. Oh, it's a newspaper article. The Prisoner of Ice, Jacob Van Ostart. Is he also your beloved friend? Oh, no, Doctor. Not at all. He is the fire that fights fire. Yes, I think it's clear your overstimulated imagination, this mania, needs to be tempered for you to live a normal life. I know your family calls it the Hartwood Curse, but I want you to know that there is nothing supernatural about your condition. It's all inside your head. And with that, I'm very qualified to deal with. In time, you will be cured. In time. In time. Yes, in time we will exercise all your demons. All the Dark Men. Yeah! Please, Mr. Hartwood, calm yourself. What happened? Oh, don't you worry your little head about it, Miss Hartwood. Your uncle and I just had our first breakthrough. Interesting. That mark on the floor looks like talisman positions, but from which direction should I look at it? Snake dagger. The Snake Dagger, a monograph by Yael Klein. In Ludwig Prinz's book on pagan rituals called The Mystery of the Grave, as translated by Nicholas Vahi, there are several references to a sacrificial dagger called the Snake Dagger. It has long been thought of as a poor translation of the original text, that it would be more appropriate with Worm Dagger from the Latin Vermis Cultrum. This seems natural, following the recent consensus that the original title of Prince's book, The Vermis Mysteris, should literally translate to the mystery of the worm. 
However, this would take away from Vahi's great effort at translating the underlying meaning of the words and revealing several cultural beliefs. While Prin certainly was using the term worm as a symbol or synecdoche for death and the dead, which is made clear by the contents of the book, in the case of the dagger, we shouldn't be too hasty to dismiss his translation. Reading through Vahi's correspondence with his patron, it appears that he had more than just the Latin text at his disposal. Vahi had dug up Prin's living relatives and uncovered several cross-referenced historical texts and an actual snake dagger. The dagger was dated to the early Middle Kingdom of Egypt and had such a clear shape of a wave that Vahi considered calling it the sinusoidal blade. Knowing the full story, it seems prudent that he chose to translate it as snake and not worm. There are several reasons why this choice of word helps us understand the pagans that Prin's book attempts to describe. The symbolic value of the shape becomes more apparent when reading about the use for the dagger. In the passage of possession and exorcism, we find the snake dagger poisons the poisoner within the victim and is therefore pacified. Where the literal text would tell us that the worm dagger trumps the demon possessing the victim, it tells us nothing of their reasoning, only that somehow this dagger wins against the demon, like it had the better hand in poker. Vahi's translation allows us to follow the underlying logic to the ritual magic that is being performed. Poison the poisoner. Sounds like fighting fire with fire. That to hurt the demon possessing its victim, the priests would have to fight back with a power that is known to the evil they are fighting. The snake dagger is therefore not only a good way to describe its form, but it also helps us understand how it could be thought of as a useful tool for exorcism. Finally, it also helps us understand their relationship to lunacy, that it was thought of as something poisoning the mind rather than controlling it. What is also interesting to note is that the possessed are always considered poisoned in their head and not their heart. The snake dagger always went to the eye of the possessed, leaving them partially blind, if they had the good luck to survive. Always went through the eye of the possessed. Like a lobotomy? Oh, don't worry, Emily. I'll, I'll get it. Just gotta find the fucking phone. Oh, okay. He's walking on his own now. If can't be. Who is this? Jeremy? Jeremy is with the dark man. You can't save him. Well, I've done everything he wanted so far, and there's just one more thing on the list. I expect him to keep his promise and return Jeremy unharmed. Get out, detective. While you still can. Detective Conby wanted nothing more than to make sense of it all. But clearly, that was not in the cards right now. Little boy. Uh... Okay, we don't know... We don't know what to put it as. Like what numbers to use? Oh my god. So I, I don't get this. All numbers are pointing or everything's pointing down to I don't know, what is that? A barbed wire? Looks like a barbed wire to me. 
take a look at that. Oh my god. That's... Okay, these... These controls are weird. Because, like, whenever the camera angle changes, even if you're... Even if you move the controller, it just keeps walking in that direction. You have to stop and then turn around. It's so weird. Um, These symbols are not showing up on there. Is there anything else to do? Mention the snake dagger. Nothing we can do this. Um. There's nothing there. Is that a disco ball at the top? What is going on with that? Okay, it's clearly a lamp of some kind, but what is going on with that? At the top I'm talking about. That is so weird. Zero, zero, zero. Oh, hey, look at that. I have no idea why zero, zero, zero worked. You okay? No. You look a little frazzled. Just stupid telephone I know I tried calling the police earlier the telephone is completely dead it's no yeah no the telephone isn't working detective Combe was worried Emily could tell that she could see the madness written on his face but what if he was the only one seeing the truth could that still be the case? 
If only he could find evidence that would make her understand that he had seen beyond the veil, or at least something that would show her he was worth the money she was paying him. I think this this counts for more than a hundred. Hartwood, I think you're gonna want to see this. More than 150 bucks. Is there bucks. something in the closet? Yeah, there is. You don't see the very obvious gate leading to whatever Jeremy's madness is serving up next? I don't understand. Are you making some kind of fashion metaphor? I'm sorry, I don't have time for this. Can you just tell me what you're doing? You don't see this. It's fine. It's fine. Catch you later. Are you going inside the closet? Yeah. You got a problem with that? No. Do what you think is right, detective. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Goodbye, Miss Harwood. Goodbye? If someone said, like, goodbye to me while they were going in the closet, they'd be like, um, what are, what are they doing? Disheartened by his failure to make Emily understand what he was doing, Detective Conby actually felt better seeing the frozen hell before him. There was a finality to it. Its clear symbolic opposite to the dark man's desert made him realize this was the end. Soon it would all be over. Oh, is this near the end of the game? I haven't left an offering at the Whispering Tree yet, though. I don't even know what we could have offered. Oh. Well, I'm frozen. Okay. We's good now. Enter hell. Yeah, looks like hell has frozen over. Oh no. Use a flare gun to let Sky and look for waypoint flags. Light your way forward. Since we got unlimited flares, I guess. Let's try it out. Prisoner of Ice. What can be said about Jacob van Ostad without evoking contempt or apologia? The first piece of information is the obvious. He is not the explorer Jeremy idolized in his youth, but the figment of his imagination. If you want biographical facts, I am not the one to answer such questions. In the case of Jeremy, he is a guardian of imagination. Or rather, a persona appointed the role of containing a self-sabotaging mania. However useful Jacob once was, his loyalty to Yermi has slowly been replaced by fanaticism. Like a firekeeper who has for decades been burnt by his own sacred flames, now does what he imagines the fire wants. Yermi has lost all control over Jacob and suffers greatly because of him, but is admittedly also still invigorated by his labor. In the plainest of words, Jacob keeps Yermi sick, so he can remain Yermi.
Interesting. The Greenland Expedition. We found the ancient Stellarium perched on a cliff facing the Arctic Ocean after a day of sailing due north of the Eskimo encampment. Jacob van Ostadt was our most keen member of the expedition. He had been chasing down the source of a peculiar type of crystallized metal present in several sacred items among the natives on the northeast coast of Greenland. The site was a remarkable find for any explorer, and we were all enraptured in our search for enlightenment and meaning. The surviving architecture seemed almost unearthly in origin and astonishingly sophisticated. The metal Jacob was searching for was abundant, almost ubiquitous. We were so taken by our find that we were surprised by the sun falling below the horizon. As we quickly picked up our gear, ready to head back to our camp, Jacob von Ostadt declared that he wanted to stay. He was adamant. We begged him to reconsider. The night would be getting colder by the hour, and we feared for all our safety. Jacob refused, threatening us with violence if we wouldn't leave him alone. As the snowfall turned heavier, we left him there on his own. The next day the weather became worse, and we had to spend hours enforcing our shelter as our tents became increasingly useless. The group had written off Jacob, thinking he must be dead. I had an urge to make one final attempt to save him, so I headed out as darkness fell with a handful of flares, and headed toward the coast and up the climb, towards the Stellarium. That's when I saw him, transfixed by a burning sky, that celestial lantern. Jacob keeled over and let out a painful shriek that struck me with such fear and pity. He was crying in agony, for the cold weather had ravaged his flesh. I called out to him, and he turned to face me. His vacant stare held me in place like a needle through a butterfly, and he said, You must leave now, Ashton. Go, and never come back. And so I left. So I'm aware that um, The Prisoner in Ice is actually, I believe it's a Lovecraft story. Um, I pretty sure I read it at one point. I've read all of Lovecraft stuff. I don't remember anything about the story. He's got so many different stories. Um, I remember nothing. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if it's a Cthulhu story or if it's just a Lovecraftian story. Taking damage. Come on, come on, come on. Run, run, run. Okay. I don't know if I'm supposed to be taking damage or not.
supposed to be following. Looking for waypoint flags. Uh, no lantern. And then ice pick. That's beautiful, but fucking terrifying at the same time, you know? Jesus. Come on, Carmi, run faster. Is that a monster? That's a monster. Okay, so he was uh, in the little squid face. Okay, so we are officially in some kind of a Lovecraft story. Half expecting Great Cthulhu to like show up, or like a silhouette or something. I mean, I should have suspected we were fishing in the Lovecraft story with Shubnay Roth, but, you know. But. Why, why did the music pick up? Why did the music pick up?
Hause. that as a weapon. Wow, oh, this is going to take a while. Uh, give me one moment, please, sir. Uh, if you don't mind holding still, please. Alright, the rest we will do with regular... Revelations. Ah, oh, some heartwarming music. Everything's okay now. We were just dreaming. Everything's peaceful and quiet. Don't worry about that blood stain on the floor. Don't slip on the bloodstain, Grace. You awake? You are awake. Mr. Conby's up. Hey, buddy. I thought you'd be knocked out for the rest of the night. <laughs> Come on out and join us, will you? I'll save you some gumbo. Good to have you back. You gave us all a good scare. What happened? You had a psychological breakdown. Sorry for manhandling. You're being violent. You stabbed Jeremy and then punched Dr. Gray. 
Are they... okay? Jeremy's a little strange, but everything's back to normal. Really? All thanks to you, combat. You want to try standing up? I really believe what's happening right now. Well, if it isn't the hero of the day. How are you feeling, detective? Never better. How about you two? Hey, Jeremy, I didn't do too much damage, did I? Things are fine. Very quiet. He's been lobotomized. What's up with him? Painkillers? Sure. No. You see, despite you having the finesse of a one-eyed butcher, you managed to lobotomize, dear Jeremy. I did what? It's actually quite impressive. It's not like I hadn't considered it myself. I just wish Jeremy could have been helped without reducing his personality to that of an oyster. <laughs> but he's gonna live. Of if course. All living. As long as someone keeps feeding him, he'll outlive the best of us. Everything was back to normal. Did any of it really happen? What had Conby actually been doing all night? Oh no, I didn't get to offer the... Give an offering to the Whispering Tree. I wonder if that changed anything. I wonder if that was like going to give a different ending or something. Does Emily know about Jeremy's condition? Yes. She seems to be handling it quite well under the circumstances. Does she still want to take Jeremy away from Dorsetto? I will have to insist that you do. This is not that kind of institution. Jeremy, hang on for a little longer, okay? We'll be going back to New Orleans soon. Oh, good. I do so miss the city lights. I, I, I know that the doctor's supposed to be like, you know, just sitting like that, but he's like doing like this. Like this, it's, it's like that. Case closed. Detective Convy had found Jeremy and brought him back to Dersetto. He worried that Emily wouldn't be all that happy with his performance, considering Jeremy's impromptu brain surgery. Maybe she would refuse to pay him in full. It was the kind of thought that would normally infuriate Convy, but right now he just felt happy to be back. No matter if he would be seeing the $150 or not, he couldn't wait to rendezvous with Emily and go back to New Orleans. Watch, I'm going to go through a door and it's going to be like reality is going to set it. Look at this party we're having down here. Might I partake of some of your finest gumbo there? Good to see you back on your feet, detective. Have some gumbo. Thanks. I'll save it for later. That was some mighty fine stirring, though. Oh, I can find her some more. Seems like everyone's in a pretty good mood. The Eve of St. John is the most important date of the whole year. It's the only day when the black goat of the woods tends to her young. We're still on this, are we? I'm gonna go look for Emily. Don't worry about her. She wouldn't leave without you, would she? She, she's, she's a sacrifice, isn't she? What are you looking for? Just keeping an eye out for the stone. Radio says it could be a wild one. I mean, we're already in the middle of it. I don't know why you're keeping an eye out for it. You don't know where Emily is, do you? She's packing some of Jeremy's things. Said she wanted to take him away. I'm sure she'll come and get you when she's ready. I should probably get a move on then. See you around, compare. Compare. Alright. 
I love how there's always three dialogue choices. Um, I'll talk to everyone first before I do that, whatever that is. Come on. That is one impressive tree. More impressive than you could ever imagine. So how does this all work? You dance around chanting? For the ritual, I mean? Stay and find out, detective. It might just do you good. You haven't seen Emily, have you? No, detective. I haven't. They're being very open with uh, this whole ritual thing, aren't they? All right, tell me, what the hell's about to happen here? Every year we have a little turn-the-page ceremony by the tree. It's symbolical. It's like life has its cycles of grief and happiness. You know, just like a tree facing the seasons. Things change, but remain the same. So this is basically New Year's Eve, but with a tree metaphor. Exactly! You're so smart, it's about starting again. I mean, who could use a positive message like that more than a bunch of lunatics like us? I get the feeling some of you think this year is going to be special. Any idea why? Well, we got some new words, thanks to your buddy Jeremy, and some other changes to the program. Let's just say, we're all in this year. Thanks for the chat. Ooh, I could talk. Oh, it's Grace. I thought I could talk to the tree. Hey, kid. What are you up to? Preparing for the ceremony. I don't want to disappoint Mother. And whose mother exactly? What's your part in this? I'm the Cabri San Corn. It's very important. Only I can settle our debt. As in blood sacrifice? You know, I had my doubts, but you are in the right place, Grace. I think you might be right, for once. Nice knowing you, kid. I don't hear any whispering. Where's Ruth, eh? Wait for Miss Hartwood? No. Can I? No, I cannot. Oh, there's Ruth, eh? Oh. That's scary. I... Oh, my God. From this angle, I thought the mask was her head, and her hair was like vines wrapped around her neck. It's just like... Oh. <laughs> what the fuck? Hey, Ruth. Glad to see you made it back to Dersetto. You too, detective. Make sure to stay for the festivities. It's no Mardi Gras, but it ain't bad. You seen Emily around? <laughs> I saw her packing some things into that old jalopy you arrived in about an hour ago. I'm sure she hasn't given up on you yet. We're not getting out of this alive, are we? Catch you later. <laughs> Looking forward to it, detective. Yeah. So, can we go in there? No. Okay, I guess we're waiting for Emily. Okay, guys. 
I'm going to save just because I haven't saved for a while. Yeah. Let's do this. Everyone knows what to do. Y'all know the new words. Mrs. Thompson, we talked about this. I'm not sure everyone is comfortable. Doctor, I insist. This is important. We've waited for so long, Doctor. Let's just go with the old song. Not every change is an improvement. Boss, good or bad, we need to move forward. All in, Doc. Let's bet it all. But we don't know what we're dealing with. It'll be okay, Doctor. Better even. Ever their praises in abundance to the black goat of the woods. Hear us, brother. Take pity on us. Take pity on us. Ever their praises in abundance to the black goat of the woods. Hear us, brother. And take pity on us. Take pity on us. Ever their praises in abundance to the black goat of the woods. Are you crazy? This year is going to lose the habit cost of Grace, stop! returned just as the festivities were about to begin. Emily was grateful that she didn't have to sit through whatever ceremony the people at the Seto had fashioned. Instead, they excused themselves and made their way to the front side of the house. With a tremendous sense of relief, Emily climbed into the car. She watched Combi ready the back seat for Jeremy in the rearview mirror. What a long she thought. Thank God it's all over. Um what? We're 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 not done yet. We gotta stop the black goat of the woods. I can't let that monster leave Dorsetto. I have to stop it. Well, nice knowing you guys. Can I can I move? Sorry, Ruth. Uh, where do I go? Up there, 
Is it up that way? Yes, it is. Oh, this is gonna suck, isn't it? I wonder if we made the offering earlier. If we would even have this boss fight. I'm assuming it's a boss fight. prepping us, aren't they? I don't even know if I'm doing any damage to it.
pistol. No, I want the I want this stuff. Oh jeez. I felt like I was really close. I couldn't find the, the machine gun bullets. Shit, 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 shit. I tried to grab the things. Can you move, please? Oh my god, did I win? So much evidence. Their devotion to the black goat was like nothing I've ever seen before. I felt so dumb believing any of it, but I'm glad I did. Why is the text so small? 
Are you okay? Everything is out of order. This isn't the way the story goes. I shouldn't be alive. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome, buddy. Hey, Grace is still alive. How are you doing, sweetie? I kind of like it. You ruined everything, but I'm not mad. All right, you ready to head back to New Orleans? Come on, Jeremy. We're leaving. Can I come? I thought you said you didn't need saving. Don't leave her. She's important. Of course we're taking her with us. Wait, this ending doesn't make sense. What what did what did any of this have to do with song because you know copyright and all that okay Th this doesn't make sense because what what does this have to do with Carmby being a resident I'm so confused I'm so goddamn confused I'm wondering if there was an objective we missed in number in chapter four, uh, where it's giving an given offering to the tree. I'm wondering if that would change the story. That would change the ending because this it doesn't make sense. Who's the dark man? We never figured that out. Was it just Doctor Gray? Why did the dark man help us? Well, not help us, but like, you know, point to room three. Why was he in uh, Jeremy's psyche? Like that book that he grabbed, what did that have to do with anything? I'm so confused. Th this can't be the true ending. Okay, well, we still have Emily's story to, to play through. Um, and I will save that for the next video, but... So many questions, so many, <laughs> so many new questions, so many unanswered questions. I'm hoping all will be revealed in Emily's playthrough. I don't know how, but we'll see. And hey, it looks like Emily got some action at the end, some action gameplay, even though she just waited outside. Okay, well, anyways, we'll, we'll see how it goes uh, starting in the next video. Thank you all so much for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next one. Take care. <laughs>